Welcome to another video blog post. This one's going to be kind of relaxing because we've actually done a fair amount of stuff already. So now we can just enjoy the spring flowering, which is unbelievable this time of year. So we're going to walk around, we're going to look at some roses, and I'm going to talk a little bit about deadheadings. I know some people have been asking me about that. So welcome and come along. I think this is the time of year every single gardener absolutely loves, particularly rose gardeners. It's that first spring flush, and you can see behind me, it's unbelievable this year. We had a late spring, which means that the blooms actually get bigger and the color actually gets deeper because they have more time to develop because they don't open so quickly. Now we've got some good sun and heat, and they're flowering like crazy. You can tell by the way I'm dressed, not a whole lot of work to be done this time of year, so I'm just going to stand here and enjoy the fragrance. I wish the camera had fragrance too. I wish it was like scratch and sniff or something like that. but. It's amazing right here. Delbard Rose, Edgar Degas, one of the painter series. This is Betty Pryor. Some people don't like single petaled roses. I happen to find them charming. They have a wildness all their own, and particularly when used in the landscape, because they blend in so well with everything else. Another great Delbard Rose, Souvenir du Louis Amad. Intensely fragrant and very healthy. Double knockout, doing its job. This is why these are so great roses. This is when climbing roses can be magical. The big one in front of you right now is New Hampshire State House, a rose from the late Mike Lowe. This is rural England, a rose bred by Peter Beals roses. Look at this thing. Masses of bloom. This repeats all season long. You may remember from the first video blog we had those roses that died back to the ground. This is it, Mutsuko, Delbard variety. It's only going to grow as a budded plant, though. This will never do well as an own root rose. Here's a little charmer. This is Pierre Gagnier. It's a Delbard climber. Really beautiful rose. And even though it's not fully petaled, it's fragrant. And that makes it very interesting and desirable to work with. I want to talk to you a little bit about deadheading. I get asked a lot about what is it, how do you do it, what's the way to do it. Well, there's a couple of different things. What it is basically is taking the old flowers off. You can see the flowers are now finished. Okay, the first question I get asked all the time is, do you have to deadhead? No, you don't. This will rebloom. However, it will rebloom quicker if I do go ahead and do the deadheading. And some people like to do it because it's tidy. The other thing you read about all the time is deadheading to what they call an outward facing butt eye. What is that? At the base of these leaves, is a very, and the anatomy of a rose video shows it a little bit better. There's a little swelling at the base of the leaves. That's a bud eye. And the idea of an outward facing bud eye is an eye that faces away from the center of the plant. The reason being is if I deadhead above this eye, the growth is going to go in this direction, and that's away from the center of the plant. If you exhibit, that's a great thing to do because you want to keep the blooms away from each other so they don't bump up against each other. If you cut roses, absolutely you want to do that thing. There's nothing wrong with that. However, these are garden roses. So I really don't worry much about it. So you can come through, you can either just snap the old blooms off. I've seen people do that. That's deadheading, really, believe it or not, that's actually deadheading. You can make your cuts just, you know, a little bit below the bloom. You can also shape the bloom while you're doing this. And I'm not worrying about the way the eye is facing. I'm just basically just cutting the old blooms. You want to cut down to healthy growth. That's my rule of thumb. I don't worry about how far I'm going down or anything like that unless I want to shape the bloom a little bit. Now, here's another thing. It's going to be a little hard to see from where you're at, but I think it'll make sense here in a minute. What the, with single blooms, you can go ahead and do what I was talking about, but sometimes you get what's called a spray, where there's lots of blooms on one stem. You can kind of hopefully see that right in here, okay? You can cut each individual one, but it's usually easier to let the whole thing bloom out, follow the bottom of the spray to where it's just a single cane again, and just cut it right there. And I just basically took off the entire spray is what I did. And that's actually a faster way to go ahead and deadhead roses that produce lots of stems on one flower. So deadheading is basically that. It's just removing the old blooms. You can shape it. I'm a little gangly right here with this thing coming out, so I'm just going to go ahead and take advantage and shape the plant up a little bit. And that's all deadheading is. On garden roses, just cut to healthy growth. Don't worry about outward-facing bud eyes unless you exhibit or want to cut the flowers to bring them into the house. And just use it to shape the bush at the same time. And again, you don't have to do this, but it's going to bloom faster if you do. You may remember, this is the bed that we very, very lightly pruned because it was so late in the year by the time I got to it, I didn't want to lose my spring flowering. 
and I didn't because it's all right here. This is an absolutely beautiful bed. The fragrance, took, this is Dame de Chen and So with Delbard Rose. The fragrance is intoxicating. So come along and meet some of these. This is Dame de Chen and So, an outstanding Delbard Rose. The fragrance on this thing is to die for. Just a fantastic rose. I know people in Florida growing this rose that love it. This is Bordeaux Narcree, one of my favorite little Delbards. And you can see just what kind of a mass of blooms and a mass display that this thing makes. Perfect for landscaping. I am real high on this rose. It's a Delbard rose not yet released called La Rose du Petit Prince. It's basically the, the Little Prince is what it's named after the book. It's fragrant, it's mauve, and it's incredibly healthy in my nose spray garden. Another unreleased Delbard rose. Rose du Molinard. Very fragrant and very, very healthy. You may remember from a previous blog post, I was planting an old garden rose called Yolanda de Aragon, and I used the phrase, the old beauties. That's what Peter Beals used to call them, the old beauties, the old garden rose. This is Souvenir de Una Mi. It's a tea rose, not a hybrid tea, a tea rose. They're completely different from each other. Then these are wonderful roses, particularly if you're like in warm climates, the southeast, they do extremely well. And don't overlook these old beauties as garden plants. I said it back in the previous post, I'm gonna say it again. And in fact, I'm gonna take you on a tour of some of the old beauties that are in my garden. Not because I can make, introduce them into commerce or not because I'm testing them, no. They're here because I absolutely love them. I know very few roses that can outrival a tea rose like this. And this will bloom all the way through fall. So let's come meet some of my old beauties. Madam Itzak Pereira, still one of the most fragrant roses I've ever seen. We've all got one of these. This is a bourbon rose that came to me from Mike Lowe. I don't remember the name anymore. So hopefully one day maybe I'll be able to figure out what it is. But the fragrance is absolutely divine. This is Alistair Stella Gray. One of the great noisettes. Really lovely kind of buffy apricot colors. Very graceful grower. Wonderful rebloomer. This is the bourbon rose George Cuvier. If you're picking up on a theme here with bourbons, you're absolutely right. Of all the old garden rose classes, this and the tea roses are probably my favorite. Lovely old rose, Jean Henry. Got the buds on this thing getting ready to come on. This is the old tea rose, Blumenschmidt. The old teas are for the southeast, some of the best roses around. And you'll see the high pointed centers that you get on some of the buds. And it was actually the old teas when crossed with some of the other roses, the hybrid perpetuals, that gave us what we know as the hybrid tea roses. And that's where that high pointed center come from, from these old, old tea roses. Still one of my favorite old bourbons, Variegata de Bologna, or as we affectionately call her, Variations on Bologna. Speaking of tea roses, William R. Smith. Look at the buds on this thing. Another great old tea rose, Madame Berkeley. Another charming old rose, this time a China, Napoleon. This is Claire Jacquier on a fence here with an old birdhouse. It's always one of my favorite little vignettes. A little mauve down there in the bottom beneath Claire Jacquier is actually perennial pink. One of the repeat flowering ramblers. That wraps up this week's video blog post. Again, not a lot of work to do in the garden. Just enjoy it. Have fun. We met some roses. Talked a little bit about deadheading. Looked at the old beauties. And again, make sure you appreciate those and incorporate them into your garden. They really are truly fantastic. As for me, I think I'll just sit here for a few more weeks and enjoy it.